Well, <clears throat> one of the first decisions I made in, when I realised that I didn't know what I felt was that I had to make a list of every single thing I was afraid of. Right. So that's probably my number one suggestion. List every fear. If you want to, my suggestion is get a journal. I, I just get a notebook. So this is my notebook that I carry with me at the moment. I've had hundreds of these over the last <laughs> so many years. And I'll read you bits from it um, uh, a, a little later. Um, but one of the things I had to do right at the start was I listed every single fear. And then I also sat down with myself and decided to list how I would feel if I was at one with God. In other words, what I believed God would feel about those particular things. Does that make sense? What would be an example? Now I say may feel because I don't know how God feels really at the time. I didn't even know how I felt, so it was very difficult. But let's say let's say one of the fears I had. One of the fears I had was um, I was afraid that I would lose my family and friends if I decided to be emotional. So in other words, I thought that my family and my friends would all just leave. Yeah, they wipe me off. And ironically, that's exactly what happened, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I left my first marriage and was totally ostracised by all my friends and family. There was only one person who supported me. Yeah. Yep. So then the next thing was, was I put a column down the middle and say, well, how would God feel about that? How do you reckon God would feel? Would God, would, what would God's feelings be about all of my family and all of my friends deciding to leave me because I'm in a state of truth? What do you think God would feel about that? Just as an idea. Okay. He's totally cool about that, isn't he? Why would he be totally cool about that? Because I'm living in truth. So therefore... Where's the error from their perspective, from his perspective? <coughs> the error is with the people who want to not love me anymore because I'm in truth. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, I'm not. I could easily then go intellectually down that, couldn't I? And I could easily then go down the track of saying, "All right, I can accept God's truth." But the truth is inside of my soul. I couldn't accept God's truth. I couldn't accept that it was not of any matter if my family totally ostracised me. Right. My father didn't speak to me for nearly yeah, for nearly seven years. Right. Didn't speak to me at all. They they um, he would he would look at me and not speak to me. I had my, my friends, all of my friends. I would walk down the street and they would look at me and walk across the road and walk somewhere else. Couldn't Every be. single friend that I ever had before I was 33 years of age, never spoke to me again. There must have been some crazy emotions you were showing. All I did was leave a religion that said you couldn't leave it. Oh, right? That's all I did. Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. So I had to list my fear. What was my fear? I would lose everything. Mm -hmm. That was my fear. What was God's feeling about that? She'd be fine. God's feeling was, it's going to be alright. Yeah. I've still, I'll look after you, mate. Yeah, I've still got you, right? <laughs> now, the third step then was to actually feel the feeling that I was feeling that was in error. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the hard part, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But at least if I've listed every fear and I've listed how God would feel about that, at least I know where I'm in error. And so what that did for me was it showed me one thing. I am in error with my emotion. In other words, 
my fear was not real. It was an error from God's perspective. But now that you've expelled that fear, would you then, you, you, you're no longer in error on that score? Once I, I had to work through the emotion of being totally abandoned by all my friends and my family. That took me nearly two years of crying. Mm -hmm. right? Now, I'm not that saying it's going to take you that long. That's just how long it took me. Mm -hmm. right? Now, after that, I then started feeling feelings that, hang on a sec, I am worthy to have friends. And I'm worthy to have people who love me. Right? But it took two years. To feel that. And now, ironically, it doesn't matter to me whether my family don't speak to me or not. At all. I still feel, I can feel love to them. My sister hasn't spoken to me now for 12 years. Oh, she's so right? So she, she hasn't spoken to me for 12 years and and I, I, can, I can love her. I don't feel mm. sad about, I don't even feel sad about that anymore. But I did cry for a long time about it. Mm. To release that emotion. <clears throat> so is that all religion based? Um, for my sister it is. Yeah. But there's also some emotional issues too, obviously. The emotional issue is that, you know, she she has a real aversion to truth in her own life as well. And she knows now that I'm staying like that I'm speaking the truth about emotions, that it's a very, very difficult thing for her to face the truth about emotions in her own life. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, it's very much to do with religious judgment. Yeah. So, can you um, explain uh, your statement, I am an error with my emotion again? Alright. <coughs> if I have a fear, or I have any emotion for that matter, that God doesn't have, then that emotion is an error that's within me. Does that make sense? Yeah. That emotion is an error, an emotional thing <coughs> inside of me that I need to release because it's in error. If I want to be at one with God, this is. So I'm assuming we want to be at one with God. Right? Of course, if I just want to be at one with myself, I can hold on to all the errors I want. Mm. But if I want to be at one with God, then I know that I needed to release that. So firstly, I needed to identify what the errors are. This is how I th thought intellectually at the beginning. It's not how I do it now. I'm just saying this is how I started to deal with my emotions. Right? And I'm and I'm not suggesting that you do it this way. It's just a, these are just ideas about how Didn't like, you go like totally crazy by the overwhelm of the sheer amount of errors that you identified after a while? Yeah. Because right, yeah. what happens to me. Well when I make a list like that, it seems so overwhelming. All those errors that I'm still living in, yeah. despite the fact that I do release them continuously, yeah. and there is still so many. And that and brought up lots of emotions yes. for me too. Yes. Like so emotions of like, what am I useless or something? Like, yes. why can't I get it? You know, what all of those kind of emotions started coming up and as how well. Can I how can I have? I had 33 pages mm -hmm. of this. Yes. 33 pages. That's what I had, right. So how did you handle that? Not going nuts? Hey. How did you handle that? Well, for the next two days, I did go nuts. Okay. And I let myself go nuts, right? And I let myself cry and and try and punish myself for having 33 pages of fears. <laughs> That are in disharmony with God. Can you release these by crying? Well, it depends what they are. Um, in in some cases, the fears were terror. Like um, yeah. I have a lot of abuse type emotions from the first century experience, like torture, abuse type emotions mm -hmm. from the first century experience. When I started releasing those, I was I went through the like feelings of torture and so forth. How do you release them? By feeling, by experiencing them as you experienced them in the beginning. And it's just a matter of trusting all the emotions that come up in that experience. Would you scream? Oh yeah, like for the, the first set of emotions that I dealt with after I dealt with this was the feelings of terror that I had. And that the, way, the only way that my body seemed to be able to deal with that was I would go into this state of being totally locked up my, my whole body would cramp, my legs would go back up, my arms would go back up, my whole face would distort, and I'd just sit there, well, when I say sit, I used to just lie on the floor in this tremendous pain for a couple of hours. And, just, yeah. and quite a number of times I didn't breathe. 
and I passed out, mm -hmm. like with it as well. But you still had the intention to heal and connect at that time. Yeah, yeah. This is soon after I began my emotional work. Those, those emotions started. But that lasted three months. Did you scream a lot? Yeah, yeah, of course. And that emotion lasted three months. Doing it like every morning and every night, that would happen to me. Mm. Right? No and control. the first lot was, yeah, the first lot was a couple of hours and it slowly, and then by the end of three months it was five minutes. And by then I was totally feeling inside of myself that I could cope with that emotion quite easily. Right? But that, that was all the terror coming out. There's all this terror that has guided my life for so long. It all just came out in three months. Mm. Right. So my body's going a bit crazy right at the moment. Yeah. So just let myself feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just let yourself feel it. So I'd be on the floor, and quite often uh, this was, I was by myself, right? Because nobody would speak to me, right? yeah. and I had no friends. Yeah. Right? So so I was living by myself, and and so <laughs> there's no one to come and rescue you. Or anything like that. So so I had to go and just do that each day, and I just did that each day. On a mattress. Well, I didn't try to do it, but my body no. just went into that yeah. state when I allowed myself to breathe. And one of the things that you must do, by the way, and I must write that down. Diaphragmatically. Mm How do you spell breathe? That's what I was Dia, here we go. From Into your tummy. Is that right? Yeah. 